This year, I decided to revive some past Christmas traditions, starting with going to a tree farm. I hadn't been to a Christmas tree farm in years and forgot how much fun it was to wander through all the different options. Choosing a tree with family makes it that much more special, I think, so it was fun to browse with my husband and my brother. This tree in particular stood out for its very large round shape, but I wasn't convinced it was the one or that it would fit in the car. One reason I love getting a tree from a tree farm is the ability to choose something unpruned and different than the perfectly pruned pre-cut trees. And this one gave us all a good laugh, but for some reason it just wasn't quite what I had in mind. After about 20 minutes of tree hunting, we found the tree. Tim did the honors of cutting down the tree. I wanted one that had staggered branches with lots of room for ornaments to hang, and this one was perfect. I leaned the tree slightly back to make it a little easier, and once it was detached, I placed it on a large sled to go have the tree measured and wrapped. Tim offered to take over and hold the tree the rest of the way. I was a little worried it might not fit in the car, but it did just fine. Thankfully, the temperatures were nice during our tree search, making it a fun, leisurely tree hunt. On our way back home, we stopped at a few antique shops, and once home, we unloaded the tree. The tree's destination is the third floor, so we decided to go in the front entry and use the large staircase. We got the tree secured in the stand, chose the best side to face front, and gave the tree some water. This really is such a great tree, and though I'm excited to decorate it, we still need to get some lights, so next up is decorating a gingerbread house with my brother and grandma. Fresh out of the shopping bag rather than oven is this cute little gingerbread house. We took a little time deciding how we wanted to begin decorating it, and so first, I added a wreath to the front with green frosting. I used red glitter icing to add some ornaments to the wreath. Next, I applied black icing to outline the windows. The icing tube had a little air pocket in it, so I was hoping that it wasn't going to splatter the icing in a burst, but luckily it didn't. <laughs> I decided to outline the front door with the black icing as well, and added some window boxes below the windows and gave the front door a handle. My brother volunteered to add the greenery to the window boxes, applying the green frosting in a similar manner as the wreath. Then he added red icing embellishments as well. We spent some time drawing the style of lantern we wanted above the door, and once we decided on a design, I used the black icing to add it to the house. Then I continued working on outlining the side windows. And using white icing, we applied mini candy canes to the sides of the house. I decided to make small wreaths in the center of each of the side windows, just to add a little greenery to the sides as well. Once the sides were complete, it was time to start working on the roof. I love the look of almond slices as shingles on a gingerbread house, but I will say it is a lot of work. Applying the little slices takes quite a bit of time and of course patience, but I think it is so worth it. Having two people working on it helps too, cutting the amount of time it takes in half. This was so much fun to decorate with my grandma and brother. I think the last time we all decorated a gingerbread house together was about 15 years ago. 
Sometimes time gets away from us a little with these traditions, but I'm glad we took the time to share this tradition together again. My brother and I picked out these marshmallow snowflakes to add on the roof. And to decorate the roof line, I used white icing to make icicles. I then applied a frosting Christmas tree to the back. While my brother worked on making a star for the tree, I used white icing to adhere colorful gumdrops to the roof of the gingerbread house. He then applied the star he made from a yellow gumdrop, and then I added an adorable marshmallow snowman we purchased. Then, using more gumdrops, I lined the exterior base of the gingerbread house using white icing to hold them in place. And finally, we dusted the house with powdered sugar to give it a snowy look. Though this gingerbread house took an hour and 45 minutes to decorate and wasn't made completely from scratch, it was a blast to decorate and will be a warm Christmas memory for all of us to look back on. So now it's time to decorate the tree. The very first thing we applied to the tree were some twinkling clear lights. And then some multicolor lights to give the tree an old fashioned charm. I wanted this to be a tree reminiscent of those from childhood years, so we used ornaments in a variety of colors and themes, along with some family ornaments. I really enjoyed decorating this tree with family. Most of my trees I decorate by myself, so there is something unexpected and cozy about looking at a tree others help decorate. Also, I'm not sure how many times over the past 120 years this house has had a real Christmas tree on the third floor. So that is something special and fun, I think, as well. To continue the old-fashioned look, I thought we would finish decorating the tree with tinsel. I hadn't used or seen tinsel used on a Christmas tree in years and thought it would add the perfect nostalgic finishing touch. Christmas traditions ground us in the present and remind us of the past. They bring proof to our hearts that magic exists in our lives. These traditions that I've shared today show that Christmas isn't all about making things flawlessly or having things perfectly matching. The beauty is found in sharing these Christmas traditions with those you love. <laughs>